Chuck, thank you very much uh, for your time. Uh, backroom deals, are, is that likely uh, to go down well with voters uh, for a party that always claimed to be transparent and is committed uh, to a clean government? There's been press free talks that Helen Zoll was the key negotiator in the vaccine negotiations between Dalil and the DA. That Patricia Dalil has backed down and offered her resignation before and not after a hearing into her shows that she judges there was serious evidence against her which would have hurt her in the public uh, domain. What does that make, therefore, of uh, Musa Maimane as a leader uh, that Helen Ziller had to intervene in this matter. Uh, Musa Maimane, again, is he merely just a, a face, a black face in that party. That's a repeated uh, taunt made at him. Certainly, Helen Zoll has had a personal relationship with Patricia DeLille over a decade, which Musa Maimane hasn't. And since DeLille is the person on the point in Cape Town, I can see rational reasons why she would have been the preferred negotiator by both sides. Talk to me about what this has done in terms of the image of the party, particularly ahead of an important election up ahead. There's certainly been lots of public expressions by DA supporters and voters of dismay, and as the ding-dong battle dragged on month after month in public, the uh, expressions of disillusionment with the DA became more. Now, of course, once an election campaign is underway, then voters will be galvanized by new slogans to be attracted back to their preferred party, whether ANC or DA or others. But certainly, the DA would want this out of the way as fast as possible even though the 2019 elections are, of course, not municipal elections, they are general elections. It's no secret that the DA wants to attract as many black voters as it possibly can. But yesterday, watching a Twitter fight between some of the highest ranking members in that party, and in particular, I want to segment this for you in this way. You had a group of white leaders in the party saying that the party has done away with uh, the BEE policy. And then on the other hand, you have the majority uh, black uh, voices in the DA uh, saying that no, that's not true. Actually, uh, the last uh, council, uh, the last federal council actually did not do away with uh, the BEE policy. How is this likely to um, go down with the voters? This is clearly one of the wedge issues within the DA. And of course, the DA's challenge is that if he wants to be taken seriously, it must at least get double digit votes, more than 10% in predominantly black voting areas, while not losing too many of its old white voters. So that's a really real challenge for them. And it's a challenge for the leadership of Musi Maimani and others. Observers have pointed out that at the previous election, the DA had an election poster showing three women on it, reflecting a rainbow. Helen Zoll, Patricia DeLille, Lindy Mazibuka, and now only one of those three women is still a leader in the DA by the time the next election comes up. Uh, just as a final question to you, Keith, do you think the DA has taken any hard lessons uh, in its in its attempt to try and attract your so-called black leaders with struggle credentials, particularly after the uh, Patricia DeLille episode? The DA has made many efforts over the years to encourage blacks to rise to leadership uh, positions. There have been the attempts with Mampeli Rampeli, the short-lived career of Lindy Mazibuka, and of course, getting Patricia DeLille on board. So the DA needs to think very carefully about the individuals that it will in future invite into leadership positions. And there's already, of course, 
keen contests in the Gauteng province structures of the DA over that, and they're facing a new mayoral competition within the DA's Cape Town caucus very soon. Do you think that this is a strategy uh, that the party should still continue uh, to pursue, that of trying to attract people with uh, so-called struggle credentials? Certainly, the DA can only benefit by having individuals with struggle credentials in it because it knocks off some of its opponents' slogans that it is simply defending white interests. And of course, the DA needs to project an image as a rainbow party in the same way that the ANC would always have at least one white, one colored and one Indian cabinet minister in its cabinet. But what's wrong with younger black leaders? What is wrong with those people, people who are well-educated perhaps? What is wrong with those people? Why the need to try and attract uh, people with struggle credentials in inverted commas? Today, one would certainly need an intergenerational mix in a leadership team. So persons with struggle credentials bring with them the commitment to demonstrating how anti-apartheid they were. But of course, such persons are now virtually all in their 60s or 70s, and one needs to encourage bright young persons out of university in their 20s and 30s to also step in. I think the DA has the current record for the youngest MP in Parliament, who is under 30, so that's an indication of what we'll be looking at in the future.